If no cardboard is available, simply use a wad of newspaper between each newspaper wrapped specimen. Without the corrugates and a dryer, you will have to change the moist papers for dry newspaper each day to prevent the specimens becoming mouldy. To press bagged material, tag the specimens and arrange each collection between sheets of paper. Fold or trim any oversized material so it fits the newspaper. The aim of drying specimens is to remove moisture as quickly as possible without cooking the material. A gentle flow of warm air, about 40 degrees centigrade, works well. Herbarium dryers vary in shape and heat sources. Here we use a vertical clothes dryer. Hole presses are placed in the dryer, corrugates vertical, and the dryer set on low heat. Most specimens will dry within two days of constant warm airflow. Portable dryers are carried into the field for extended collecting trips away from facilities. A foldable open-ended box made from marine ply with supports for a heat disperser works well. An electric element or gas ring set very low with presses on top will work. Make sure you're familiar with the heat source, that it's reliable and set sufficiently low so as not to cook or worse, burn the specimens. If you're travelling long distances in dry country, securely strap the loaded presses to the roof rack. The air passing through the corrugates will dry the specimens. Don't put specimens in normal ovens, as they'll cook rather than dry gently. Ducted heating also can be used. Place the press over a duct so that the air can pass through the cardboard sheets. Some homes and colleges have drying rooms. Place your press in a position where the warm, dry air is best circulated. Although the plant specimens are not acid-free, the ideal materials for specimen preparation from this stage on are acid-free and archival in quality. For student collections, this additional expense is not necessary. Some herbaria leave the specimens free on the sheet. This makes inspection easy, but the specimen is free to move around and is more subject to damage and loss. Other herbaria fix the specimens to the sheet. Some use wood glue. This makes for secure preservation, but often hinders later observation and use of the specimen for research. A good compromise is tape. We use brown glued tape to fix the specimen. Clear archival quality tape on a dispenser is now available too. This is not the common sticky tape, which is not satisfactory. Take care to place the specimen to best advantage on the sheet, leaving room for the label in the lower right hand corner. Some trimming may be necessary, but the folding and presentation are largely determined at the pressing and drying stage. Good work in those stages provides good specimens here. We produce labels from the database compiled from the collection books. These computer-generated labels are printed on a dot matrix printer. Laser printers may not have the same degree of permanency. If you are writing labels by hand, use permanent ink pens or even pencil. Constructing a database of specimen information not only enables production of the labels, but allows searching and production of lists of any of the information contained there. Cellophane bags for fragments of fruit, complete with a tag, can be slipped into a manila envelope that has been glued to the sheet. Specimens are placed in a box for protection. To remove the specimens, we use lifters. A folder paper is placed around the stiff sheet to protect the specimen and minimise the loss of material. You can improvise with brown paper or butcher's paper for the folders. Care is needed when handling herbarium specimens, so specimens are always held horizontally. To look at a box full of specimens, look at one at a time and place them to the side. As with the student collection, don't leaf through them like pages in a book. Before specimens are brought into the herbarium, they are placed in a deep freezer for at least three days at minus 18 degrees centigrade to kill insect pests. The main culprits are tobacco beetles, silverfish and book lice. To further prevent infestations, a few naphthalene balls are placed in each box. An important practice if you're keeping specimens at home in a sealed box or plastic bag. Your hand lens is still a useful item in the laboratory. A binocular dissecting microscope or stereoscope will provide greater magnification than the hand lens and free your hands to manipulate the specimen. A stereoscope with arm 
will let you look at herbarium specimens without damaging them. There are different types of plant morgues and plant museums. Herbaria aren't places where we grow herbs. Simple field herbaria are often prepared for field identification in a floristic study. Field references mounted on A4 sheets can be slipped into plastic sleeves and placed in a folder for use in the field. You may organise these by family and genus alphabetically, or by habitat and family and genus. Research herbaria, such as the New England herbarium, have a much broader coverage of plants. Our collection is arranged by class, family, genus and species, all alphabetically. University herbaria abound, some being very substantial. Most major herbaria in Australia are either state government operations or part of CSIRO. Overseas, private and government herbaria are common. We've examined some of the reasons for collecting specimens and introduced you to a variety of equipment and sampling approaches. Application of these collection and preservation techniques will assure that your herbarium specimens provide useful information and are of the highest standard.